Hi, I'm Zahal Reed, Senior Staff Attorney in Medmark's Risk Management Department. I would like to welcome you back to Medmark's Risk Management video series on clinical trials. In our previous videos, we provided an overview of clinical trials, we discussed the product liability implications of clinical trials, and we reviewed the informed consent process. In this video, we will discuss the importance of the clinical trial agreement, which is essential for outlining the roles, responsibilities, and obligations of all parties involved to ensure regulatory compliance and patient safety. Let's begin by discussing what a clinical trial agreement is and why it's important. As you embark on phase one of your clinical trial, one of the critical steps before initiating the study is establishing a clear legal framework. This is achieved through a well-drafted clinical trial agreement. This legally binding contract is essential for delineating the expectations, rights, and commitments of all parties involved in the research, including sponsors, investigators, and institutions. The CTA covers critical aspects like the scope of the study, funding, payment schedules, confidentiality, publication rights, and intellectual property. It also details the process for data handling, reporting adverse events, and ensuring compliance with regulatory requirements. Now you might wonder, why is a clinical trial agreement so vital? It serves as a safeguard. Research involves risks, and a CTA lays out risk management plans, including insurance requirements and indemnity clauses, protecting the stakeholders. Today, we are going to delve into the risk management aspect of your CTA. We will discuss the key provisions that need to be carefully tailored in a clinical trial agreement, considering the document primarily from the perspective of the sponsor. As we just reviewed, CTAs are comprehensive documents comprised of various clauses that protect the interests of the parties involved and ensure the trial is conducted ethically, safely, and in compliance with applicable laws and regulations. Here are some vital clauses typically found in the CTA. You will want to start with your definitions clause that clearly defines terminologies used throughout the agreement to avoid ambiguity. You want a provision that outlines the scope of the work and a provision that covers protocol compliance. The protocol compliance provision will require strict adherence to the study protocol, amendments, and any related documents governing the trial. The protocol compliance clause is especially important for the sponsor as it outlines the obligation of the trial site to adhere strictly to the study protocol as designed by the sponsor. This clause is significant for several reasons. By strictly following the protocol, the site assures that the trial scientific and methodological standards are maintained. It is also important for patient safety. The protocol includes details on dosage, administration, monitoring, and actions to be taken in case of adverse events. Compliance ensures that patient safety is prioritized and risks are minimized. It can aid in reducing liability. If a patient is harmed due to the site not following the protocol, the sponsor could potentially be held liable for any resulting harm. The protocol compliance clause helps to manage this risk by clearly establishing that the site must strictly follow all protocol procedures as a condition of conducting the trial. In case of non-compliance, the clause may provide legal grounds to shift responsibility to the site, provided that the sponsor has exercised due diligence in training, monitoring, and supporting the site. And lastly, it does help maintain consistency. Consistency in how the trial is conducted across different sites ensures that the results are comparable and the data pool remains robust and uniform. For a sponsor, the inclusion of a protocol compliance clause is a key strategy in reducing their exposure to liability. It sets a clear expectation for the site and if the trial site violates this clause, the sponsor can often deflect some responsibility for incidents arising from such a breach. Furthermore, it allows the sponsor to outline procedures for corrective action, including additional training, increased monitoring, or in extreme cases, termination of the site's involvement in the trial. Another key provision 
that is important for all parties is the insurance clause. It stipulates the minimum amount and type of insurance the parties must maintain to cover potential liabilities arising from the trial. In particular, products liability insurance is crucial for both the sponsor and the site involved in the research. Remember that in the case of product liability insurance, this coverage is specifically in place to protect against claims arising from potential harm caused by the investigational product being tested. This clause is fundamental. Developing a new medical product comes with inherent risks. Despite rigorous preclinical testing, unexpected adverse events can occur once the product is used by human subjects. Product liability insurance ensures that sponsors have financial protection against claims that may arise from such events. It helps safeguard the company's financial stability and reputation, and it's also a sign of due diligence, showing that the sponsor has taken responsible steps to mitigate risks associated with the trial. Product liability insurance is an essential element in managing the sponsor's risk. It's the safety net that allows innovation and research to continue, understanding that should something go wrong, the sponsor has measures in place to handle potential claims without jeopardizing their operations or the welfare of trial participants. Next, we will look at the indemnification clause. It outlines the responsibilities for compensating any party that incurs losses or damages during the clinical trial. This part of the agreement specifies who pays for what if things go awry, typically covering costs from legal claims and associated damages. From a sponsor's point of view, the indemnification clause is their shield. It often includes provisions that protect the sponsors from liabilities resulting from trial-related mishaps, especially those that are beyond their control. At the same time, the agreement ensures that the sponsor will compensate the site for claims arising from product faults or protocol designs that are the sponsor's responsibility. It's crucial that the indemnification clause is negotiated thoughtfully, delineating the responsibilities clearly and fairly between the parties. Next, let's look at the subject injury provision. It outlines responsibilities and procedures in the event a trial participant is injured as a result of the study. Imagine the subject injury clause as the trial's pledge of honor. Its purpose is to set forth the obligations related to injuries that trial participants may suffer as a consequence of participating in the study. It details who is financially responsible for the medical care or compensation if, unfortunately, a subject is injured during the trial. From the sponsor's vantage point, this clause is a safeguard that defines the extent of their liability. Sponsors should craft this clause to cover injuries that are directly caused by the investigational product and study protocol. Lastly, let's look at the provision covering compliance with laws. The compliance with laws provision is the compass that guides a clinical trial's legal and regulatory journey. It encapsulates the requirement for all parties involved to adhere to applicable laws, regulations, and guidelines from federal to state and local levels and including international standards where relevant. For sponsors, this clause is a shield, a defense strategy ensuring that the trial is conducted within the rigorous confines of legal and regulatory frameworks. Think of it as a commitment that serves to protect the sponsor from unanticipated legal entanglements and financial penalties. It reassures stakeholders that the clinical data generated will be robust and credible, satisfying regulatory bodies like the FDA or EMA. Turning to the sites, they see this clause as a structured path to walk along, a clear outline of the regulatory expectations they must meet. It provides a foundation upon which they build their operational strategies. In essence, it sets the stage for compliance, quality, and safety, critical touchstones in the realm of clinical research. Other provisions you will want to include in your CTA are data management and confidentiality, intellectual property rights, publication rights, termination, and dispute resolution. The clinical trial agreement plays a pivotal role in outlining the obligations of all parties involved and ensuring regulatory compliance and patient safety in clinical trials. 
by addressing key aspects such as funding, confidentiality, and compliance requirements, this legally binding contract establishes a clear legal framework for the study. This concludes our video on the clinical trial agreements, and we hope you will join us for our next video where we will discuss the importance of vetting your institutional review board. That concludes our video for today.